yung pagkawin mo, pinag na yung kima. Yung gymnastic yan. Hello, everybody out there on Facebook land. Hey, everybody. All right. Oof. Oh, let me take my phone down. All right. So hello, everybody. Welcome to Candid Conversations with Coach D. Okay. All right, so while we're checking in, while we're um, welcoming everybody, everybody that's on the screen, if you can go ahead and um, go to my page and please share the feed that we are on right now. All right, let's share it, let's share it, let's share it. Tag some people so we can get some people on to see what we're talking about today. And if you are, um, if you're on the screen and you don't know where to go, just go to Demetria Davis or you can go to Parallel Fitness and you will see it, um, you should see it pop up. All right. Good. I see y'all sharing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. So we have Hello. some coaches, yeah. another coach that just came in from practice. So I think we have just about every um just about everybody in. Um, I think that is just about everybody. So everybody that's watching on Facebook land or wherever you're watching from, I just want to welcome you to Candid Conversations with Coach D. Um, I am originally from Fayetteville, North Carolina. I ran track at um, Terry Sanford. Shout out for the Bulldogs that's on, that's on the Zoom. Um, and um, after I graduated from high school, I went to the University of South Carolina on a full track and field scholarship. And I ran there. And then after college, I competed professional for a while. And I got a gold medal in the 2003 um, World Championships in the 4x4. Four four. And so this topic that we're talking about tonight is very dear to my heart. Um, because as we all know, through the pandemic, things have shifted. The athletic climate has shifted. Our family climate has shifted. And so I wanted to bring some amazing athletes in high school, college, um, in the professional aspect and amazing coaches together so that we can discuss and so we can tell the people and talk to the people about um, what's happening right now in the athletic climate. And not only that, as an athlete and as a coach about having a champion's mindset and what it means that even though adversity comes, you got to still pivot. You got to still do whatever you got to do to make sure that you continue to um so that you continue to obtain the goals or whatever it is that you are trying to reach. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And what I want us to do is I want each person on here to come on. And I just want you to introduce yourself. Take about 30 seconds. Um, and I want you to tell everybody your name. And I want you to tell everybody your um, accolades, whatever accolades you may have, or your title. And so let's start at the top um, with Coach Matt. Let's start with Coach Matt. <laughs> Coach Matt, you gotta hold on, hold on. I'll unmute you. Go ahead. There you All go. Right, you got me. Am I good? There you go. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Uh Bruce McClellan. I'm the uh head football. They call me Coach Mac. Uh that's the that's what you'll hear around. Uh mm -hmm. I'm the head football coach at Terry Sanford High School, graduated from there, uh coached for a while and then uh left into the private sector, came back and uh, and coached have coached baseball and football my life and uh was named head coach three years ago. So I've been coaching about 15, 16 years and uh, love what I do. Yes. Thank you so much, Coach Matt. He's an amazing, he's an amazing man, guys. I work with him every day. 
Um, next, we have the twins. Please introduce yourself. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Shania Ingram. I am a sophomore in college, running college track and field. I'm originally from uh, the parish of St. Anne, Jamaica. And uh, recently, I was awarded MVP, gold medalist of the Penn Pathan, and uh, high jump and long jump for NCAA Division II CIAA championships. Yes. Awesome. Amazing. That's awesome. All right. Um, the, your twin got to speak. Go, twin. <laughs> Uh, um, I'm Shanae, Shanae Ingram. I'm a sophomore as well, uh, running in college track. We, um, I am a middle distance runner and a hurdler. I recently was awarded second place in the 800 meters that we concluded um, CIAA conference championships. Indoors. Awesome. <laughs> Amazing. Who do we got next? Come on in. Go ahead, Tosh. <laughs> Go ahead, talk. I didn't know you were talking to me. Hello, <laughs> good evening. Um, my name is Natasha Hastings. I am from New York City, currently in Austin, Texas. Um, I also ran track at the University of South Carolina. I'm game Cox. <laughs> um, I'm now a professional track and field athlete. Um, for the last 12 or 13, I don't know how many, long time. Um, I'm a new mom, philanthropist, entrepreneur, and here, I, oh, I'm a two-time Olympic gold medalist, a few world championships. Of course. Here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. Who we got next? Come on, Dwight the Great. Tell them who you are. I'm here, there you okay. go. I'm Dwight the I was about to say Dwight the Great. That's crazy. But I'm Dwight Phillips. I'm from Decatur, Georgia, a graduate, Arizona State University. I'm now a coach, and I was a professional athlete for many years, many months ago. And I had some success. And now Come on, I just, Dwight. And I just want to help others, you know, exceed whatever I did. So okay. that's, all. that's me. So if he don't want to say it, I'm going to let y'all know right now. Okay. Dwight is a, what, four-time Olympic gold medals, or is it five? No, no, no. It's world championships, five times, but nobody's what? counting. Nobody's counting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that's a lot. That's amazing. Okay. Um, and who, who do we have next? Deanna. Hi, I'm Deanna Price. I uh, hope yeah. everyone is doing well. Hi. <laughs> um, I am a track and field athlete. I specialize in the women's hammer throw. Um, basically went to Southern Illinois University. Um, I was actually a softball player and uh, actually held the home run record for Missouri, but I decided to do track and field because they took softball out of the Olympics. So got a scholarship for track and field. Um, Ended up being a two-time NCAA champion. And then, you know, um, I was going to go to school to be an, you know, be an accountant, but, you know, hammer kind of took off. And uh, I actually just, uh, the first ever American to win um, world championships in the women's hammer throw. So, yeah. Yes. Awesome. Yes, that is amazing. All right. Who do we have next on? Um, this is, who do we have next? Go ahead, Dorian. Um, uh, my name is Dorian. Um, I'm a senior in high school. Oh, I was a senior um, <laughs> for the COVID. Uh, yeah, but uh, um, I I had a lot of great accomplishments in high school. I became the uh, FTS all-time leading rusher, um, finishing off with 6,000 yards, about 6,000 yards. Um, I play football and I play baseball. I'm a center fielder for our baseball team. I'm, I'm committed to Pitt to play for baseball and um. I'm just glad to be here. So thank you. Awesome. 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 Young man. And next, who do we have? Natalie. Hi, I'm Natalie Jernigan. Um, I was also a senior at Terry Sanford and I was a middle hitter on the varsity volleyball team and the 2018 2A state champion. And I'm committed to Cape Fear Community College in the fall. Awesome. awesome. Amazing. Volleyball. 
All right, down at the bottom next, we have three beautiful people on. Um, we can start with Aria Tate. Hi, my name's Aria. I do the heptathlon, which I just started to learn. Um, and I was top 20 in the high jump um, for indoors. So just starting something new, but yeah. Okay, next, Mackenzie. Hi, my name is Mackenzie. I'm a senior at Wharton High School. I'm a hurdler, and I just signed last week to U of O. Yes, University of Mount Olive. Awesome. And in the middle, who do we have? Hello, this is Heenan Tate. I am a sprint and hurdle relay coach at Wharton High School in Tampa, Florida, and uh, and the uh, proud brother-in-law of our host, uh, Mr. Demetria Davis. Awesome. Thank you. And he forgot to mention that he also ran track. Can you tell us a little bit where you ran? And can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, I ran the high hurdles. Um, got to travel uh, the world, see the world through track and field, and uh, got an opportunity to uh, be alongside to me the greatest hurdler in the history of track and field, Alan Johnson. So uh, Demetri and I were training partners for a while. That's how we know each other. And yep. uh, and so my best time in the hurdles, 13.47. Yes, awesome, awesome. And then next we have, come on, nephew. This is my nephew, y'all. Go ahead and tell us who you are. How y'all doing? Uh, I'm uh, Auden Tate. Uh, um, I'm the uh, brother of uh, Aria and uh, son of Heenan that was just uh, talking. I'm 23 years old. Um, I uh, play for the uh, Cincinnati Bengals going into my uh, third year. Uh, I went to college at uh, Florida State. And um, I'm from South Carolina, but uh, live in Tampa right now. Awesome. Thank you so much for everybody introducing themselves. And as you can see, everybody watching, we have an amazing panel here tonight. And so I just want to jump right into it because I know that some people um, are just coming from practice. Um, and I know that Dwight is at practice. Um, and so people have lives, people got families, babies and everything. So I just want to jump right into it. Um, and I just want us to talk about a few things that are going on during this pandemic. So um, I want to go and ask the question of how has the pandemic um, or COVID-19 coronavirus, how has that shifted your goals that you had, um, whether you're an athlete or whether you're a coach? So it could be a high school coach, um, what your outlook is on the next upcoming year. Um, it could be... Um, an Olympic coach, Dwight, you're an Olympic coach. And I know even myself personally from running, now you got to switch up how you train your athletes because they were getting ready to go into peak season to get ready for the Olympics. Um, even those college athletes getting ready to go to college, what, what, ha what happened? What did you have to do in order to keep your mind focused um, on, this sh on this shift? Um, so let's get a coach. Can a coach come on? Just tell me what you had to do and how this has affected you. Well, for me, uh, the, the issue that I had, of course, is you, you got the disappointments of your seniors. I mean, you have disappointments from all of your athletes, whether they're freshmen, sophomore, junior. But the seniors were really, um, um, really on my heart during this time because a lot of them didn't get a chance to display what they had been working all fall and all you know winter for, and uh, we were look, really looking for some great performances, and and it's just reassuring them. Uh, I, you know, I felt it was my job to reassure them that they still had an opportunity to do what they were dreaming of doing, and so it was just that constant trying to keep them uh, motivated, uh, continue to do the things you need to do, make sure your ab work is getting done. All those things, because you don't know when it's going to open back up. And I think more than anything, you know, you try to stay as close to a normalcy as possible. Um, if you can do that, then, you know, the opportunities, you know, we're going to get another opportunity. We just don't know when yet. You know, they're opening up some things now. It's just, and just that right. challenge, keeping the athletes uh, motivated, keeping them disciplined, doing the things that they need to do to keep themselves in shape. 
So that was the biggest challenge for me. Um, I, I, I'm fortunate to be able to have some of my athletes that I deal with now uh, on a daily basis. And, you know, we do everything, you know, in, in, you know, as safe of a manner as we can and uh, making sure that they get in the things that they need to get in so that, you know, when it's, when it's time to roll, we don't want to be getting ready. We want to be ready to roll. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. That's yeah, that's key. Making sure that you reassure them. That is definitely key. Um, I want to hear from um Coach Mac a real quick, and then yeah. after that, I want to hear from Dwight Fields because um Coach Heenan Tate coaches track and field, but Coach Mac, you coach football, <clears throat> so there's yeah. probably a little different dynamic. And then I want to hear from Dwight Phillips because you've had to readjust some things because you were getting athletes ready to get ready to go to the Olympics. You know what I'm saying? So I want to hear from you, Coach Mack. Well, uh, I think he said it the best way you could possibly say it is, uh, you know, that disappointment's the first thing you got, the hurdle you have to get over. And uh, we just assured the, the guys from a football standpoint, Springs, when we put in a lot of our plays. So we're not able to put in those, you know, those plays and rep them, but we are able to give those guys, you know, give them some things that they can work on at home. But the biggest thing is you have to take X's and O's out of it and, and fight against that fear of, are we going to have a season? Is, you know, when is the season going to get here? Right. We, talk, we talk about controlling the things that we can control. And, you know, Dorian's a huge example of that, you know, a four-year starter for us. Um, we control the things we control. Uh, athletes are creatures of habit. So we, we try to get them in a, you know, in a routine to where they're actually getting up and moving and doing things and working out. You know, uh, Coach Van does a great job with our, our workout program year round. So we try to take those things and then make that contact, you know, almost daily as much as we can contact them to keep their spirits up and assure them that, hey, look, we want to be ready. We don't want to, when we come back, we don't want to be behind. We want to be ready to hit the ground running and put things back in. Right. That sounds good. That's exactly right. On the ground, boots on ground. That's right. Ready, so Ready to roll. Yep. The white. Tell me how you've had to shift and how you've had to readjust some things as a professional um, coach that's coaching Olympic caliber athletes. Well, it's been a huge adjustment because you just have so many different variables you have to take into consideration. Like you got the mental, the physical, but more importantly, you have the emotional side of it. Yes. And, you know, you become emotionally attached to going to the Olympic trials to going to making it to the Olympics and having to recalibrate that and just kind of break down the season and keep everybody galvanized so that they can be prepared going into 2021. Um, I think that's most important from my standpoint and just understanding that, uh, you know, this gives us an opportunity where we can just work, you know, on our weaknesses and make our strengths a little bit stronger. So, you know, for me, we're staying on the same plan, you know, all the way until July, we're going to take a little break and then we're going to just refocus and gear up towards 2021, prepare for the indoors so that we can be prepared for the Olympic trials, most importantly. Right. So real quick, Dwight, my question is because, um, I mean, I'm sure other athletes do this, but I know for us track athletes, we usually have a certain time that we um, are trying to peak, right? And so you had to change your workouts. Did you have to change your workouts in order, you know, so that they're now ready to peak in 2021 instead of being able to peak coming up for the Olympics? Well, I definitely had to downshift. That we were getting ready to have? Yeah, we, we, we certainly had to downshift a few gears so that we can be prepared to be at our best in 2021. But at the same time, you know, I think it's also – we can use this opportunity to get better. So if you do have those underlying weaknesses, you can use that to elevate your game to another level. Um, I have a lot of developmental athletes that are right on the cusp of, you know, making it to the Olympic trials, but you give them another year, maybe we can say, hey, instead of us making it to the trials, we can think, oh, we're making it to the finals. Right. The ones making it to the finals, now we can think, hey, I can, I think that, you know, I can use this time and I can actually be a key contender at the Olympic trial. So, you know, I'm just always mentally just stimulating the athletes and just, you know, getting them to understand that we can use this as a, a, a benefit to elevate our, our game. Right. Good. So let's hear from um, a couple of athletes. 
Um, because after we hear from a couple of athletes, I want to shift gears and I want to go to what our outlook and our expectation is um, for the next upcoming year. But before we do that, I want to hear from some athletes. Let's hear from these um, high school athletes that are leaving um, high school, getting ready to go into college. And then I want to real quick, I want to hear from the athletes that are in college and what you've had to do as far as, you know, wondering like, oh my God, is anybody going to look at me? Am I going to get recruited? Or um, what am I going to do? Try to stay in shape. This was going to be my best year, you know? Um, and fortunately, all of our athletes that call af um, high school athletes we have on here have already committed to um, schools. Um, but Dorian, um, Dorian, and we have Natalie, and we have Mackenzie, kind of give me real brief how you how you're taking this whole thing with getting ready to go to college and not maybe doing college visits and stuff like that dory um, yes sir uh i'll probably say um it, when coaches tell you all the time to to really take it in as a senior you always hear that a lot um this will be your last time on the field uh like when i especially playing football i heard a lot coach back used to tell us a lot you don't know when the last your last game will be and um with this COVID stuff, it really hit me because it, it just, it was taken away so fast. Um, the last day I was in school, I did not know that would be my last day in school. So it's just like those moments um, you just have to take in. Um, luckily I was being recruited before the COVID hit. Um, I was blessed for that. But some kids that were just hoping for this season at the end, they don't get that chance. And it's just sad because I mean, that it's adversity, like y'all say, it's, it's adversity, it's, it's really hard. And luckily I was like, I'm blessed to be committed to be playing baseball, but um, mm -hmm. my baseball season was snatched right out of my hands. And wow. it's just, it's, it's hard, but it's, it's something that I just have to fight through. They, people tell me all the time, this is something that no one, no people, no one will go through. No one in a hundred years, nothing will go through. So it's just, mm -hmm. It, I'll say it is really hard, but it's just, this is something we have to fight through. Right. And before we hear from Natalie, if I'm not mistaken, Dorian, when the last game that you guys had before all this hit, I hear you hit a home run and that's when the coaches were there looking at you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma that's really, amazing. Yeah. That is yes, amazing. Wow. Was, so, and congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, Natalie, real quick, um, and then we're going to go to Mackenzie. Natalie, real quick, just tell me, um, because yours is kind of different. You committed earlier in the year, in January, um, yeah. but still tell me as an athlete how you how you have been handling this, getting ready to go to college. Um, well, personally, for myself, um, you know, volleyball season for school ball is in the fall, and I had an amazing school ball season. We went to the third round of state playoffs. And um, even though we did take a pretty hard loss, um, an athlete like myself, I look forward to travel ball because travel ball is, you know, that's where it's at. You know, I'm committed to playing in college, but I love going to tournaments and seeing girls that are committed division one that are a solid four inches taller than me that I'm trying to figure out, you know, what I need to do how I need to be a better athlete. So um, my last mm -hmm. travel tournament, I didn't know that was going to be my last one. And mm -hmm. I had several that I was planning to go to that were going to be like really big nationals, girls from all over the um, country and even outside of the country come to to compete. So um, mostly for me, it was a little bit of an emotional thing because I think a lot of us that have played, um, you know, sports, it's like, when you have stuff going on, that that sport is your safe, your safe place. Your safe so place. when you feel like, um, you know, that you can't go to that, you're trying to figure out how do I cope? How do I, you know, change what I do with my life to still, um, you know, continue and try to improve as a better athlete and a person outside the court. That's good. I like how you said you were looking forward to going so that you could see what you need to do to be a better athlete. That's an amazing mindset. That's a champion's mindset. Um, real quick, tell me, Mackenzie, how you've been handling this thing. I know I've talked with you a little bit and you've been handling this thing, trying to juggle which school you're going to go to. Um, and you just committed as of last week. So tell me, um, or this, no, this week, I think it was, but just tell me real quick, um, real brief, how you were able to handle this. 
Um, I think initially there was a lot of loss of motivation. I think when you go into your senior year, you have what you want to do. You want to make it to districts, go to regions, get to states, place, and all that great stuff. And so I remember when it got canceled and we were looking forward to a really big meet ready to put down the PR and that just wasn't an option anymore. But um, it very quickly turned into I had to find a different way to motivate myself. So even though there isn't a chance now, there may be a chance in the future. So I have to get up and do my ad work, get up and go do a bike ride, get up and jog, get up and work out and do something just so that at that opportunity, even if there's just one meet and one thing. Awesome. That's good. Making sure you stay on that ab work. I like it. Um, so I, somebody had something they were going to say? Okay. Um, so real quick, I want to hear from the twins. I want to hear from Deanna, Natasha, and Auden Tate. And um, I want to hear from you guys. What we want to hear is, what are your expectations? Um, Auden, let's start with you. You are an NFL wide receiver for the Cincinnati Bengals. So what are your expectations? What are you thinking like, what's getting ready to happen when training season's getting ready to come up? Tell us as um, a professional football player, what's going through your head right now? Um, it's just uh, like she was saying about the schedules thing. I say just putting yourself on the schedule. So, you know, you're on a daily routine. That way, you know, you know, going to bed, you got something, you know, know what you're doing and everything like that. Trying to keep everything as normal as possible. But I mean, the, like, I mean, the goal doesn't really change. I mean, yeah, COVID, yeah, COVID kind of messed up some stuff. I was training in Boca Raton, and then I came up here thinking I was going to be up here for like a week. But now I'm up here kind of like long period of time. So, I mean, the goal doesn't really change. It's really the process. So now I just got to find ways, you know, going to my, um, my uh, trainer, his, uh, his house, he has an open uh, gym in his uh, garage. So I go there, and now instead of going to the field, I got to go to like, uh, like just an open field somewhere where, you know, maybe it ain't. It ain't, ain't going to be no lines or anything, but it's just you can still find ways to get to work. It's just, you know, finding it. But the right. goal doesn't change for me. That's good. I like that. The goal doesn't change, but the process changes. And then even with the process changing, the good thing is you're in Florida with your family, so you are getting to spend a little more time with them maybe than you would have been able to spend if you were, um, if you were away, right? Definitely. Definitely. So, yes, ma'am. Um, Right. So um, real quick, Deanna, and then we're going to go to Natasha and the twins. Tell me, what is your expectation now for this upcoming year? Um, goals. Um, the goal don't change, but the process changes. OK, um, so we need to hashtag that. <laughs> but what um, what is it that you're thinking now as um, you're a hammer thrower? You know, Deanna, what is it that you're thinking now? How are things shifting? Just what's going on for you? Well, honestly, it's it's trying to find a regulation size, you know, uh, just a ring to throw in. Um, luckily, mm. my husband is my coach, so he's okay. very, very straightforward on. He's like, all right. Um, he built me like a little ring out of metal that I could just put down on concrete just so I can throw into an open field because the university shut down. We're not able to throw there. Um, and he, he's been great. He's been fantastic. He completely cleared out our garage, built like a weight room area for me to lift there. Um, it's definitely changing a mental mindset for me personally, because I'm, I'm really like, I'm a social, I love hugs. I love people. <laughs> it's, been, it's been really hard. Um, cause I love, I love traveling. I love going to different countries, just seeing, you know, my friends. Cause one thing I love about, you know, the women's hammer throw and probably even other events, you get to see the people that you compete against a lot. And, um, you know, it's catching up with them, seeing how they're doing. And, uh, you know, we all kind of work together to push each other. And um, one thing I absolutely like, love about competing against these great athletes is, you know, they're all very supportive. They're not there thinking like, I'm going to tear you down. You know, uh, I absolutely love it. I think you're going to see great things of um, coming from the women's hammer throw coming up this year. I was expecting it was going to be like 77 meters just to make the Olympic trials for the women's hammer throw this year, which is <laughs> insane because like, I just, they're, it's just wonderful. And, uh, you know, um, I think with this time, it definitely kind of reset everybody's kind of perspective, but um, it's, it's been hard because you don't get those connections like you're wanting. Um, mm -hmm. But 
you know, we really try to break things down. We're doing chair turns in my driveway. We're, you know, trying to lift as much as we can. My husband, he's sitting there, he's like pushing on the bar going down. He's like, all right, you have to back squat 700 a day. Let's go. You know, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's pretty good though. Um, right. Just trying to keep a positive mindset. That is probably my biggest thing. Um, as long as I'm smiling and being happy, that's, that's, that's what's going to get me to that next level of just taking every day for what it is and knowing that, you know, it's how I eat, it's how I sleep, it's how I train, you know, don't get stuck in a rut. Just make sure that every day you're doing something a little bit better. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I love the fact that your husband built the stuff for you. That is amazing. He's the sweetest. He, like, That's he just, awesome. Yeah. He, I was like, like it's, it's been great because he's a college coach. So he's okay. usually all this time now. Like this weekend would be conference, but, uh, you know, I get to see him a lot more, uh, which is a good thing because he'll be together. Yes. But at the same time, it's like, you go to that wow. side of the house today. I'm going to go to that side. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm sure, and I'm definitely sure him as being a collegiate coach, um, I'm definitely sure some things have definitely shifted from, for them. Um, I was able to talk to a collegiate coach. Um, they weren't able to come on, but I know your husband can probably attest to this um, because they have to get all these different things, rules and regulations with coming on to be able to speak and so she couldn't come on but she was saying like they're still doing zoom meetings recruiting through zoom i mean they're still working hard you know yeah. trying to recruit these athletes and get them to come yeah you um, know he's been he, he has to like zoom talk to them you know he wants to like a virtual tour of like here's our campus like wow look at it virtual like, tour. Great. and it the is future then uh it's been interesting but um, I say the hardest thing for him is, you know, the NCAA has its rules and regulations that, you know, we're not really allowed to work with the kids now. Right. And even if they're wanting to, they're, they're literally messaging us saying, Hey, I want to practice. What can we do? We're not technically allowed to tell them or we're just wow. like, just do what you think needs to be done. That's crazy. And, and honestly, it's really kind of tying, you know, the coach's hands because the kids want to be better, but we can't, you know give them their workouts and we're like uh, well you know just you know what to do just at least do something <laughs> so right that's yeah, right going. <laughs> well good luck to him definitely um Natasha let's hear from you on what the what's your expectations and you're um you're a new mom as well so I'm sure you know this is probably like well I get to spend a little more time with him but I was looking forward to taking him I wanted him to go to the Olympics whatever it is so just kind of give us real brief like what are you going through what are some things that you're having to deal with in order to shift during this time well Deanna let me say first of all if I was one of those kids I was definitely breaking the rules but um <laughs> you probably shouldn't have said that sorry but <laughs> honesty, honesty. the work the work has to get done um, I, you know, I, I'm really taking this opportunity to be creative and to reshift, to like um, reshift, to shift, um, because this season was for me the most personal season that I've had my entire career coming back from having a child. My son is nine months old. And so for many, I was up against the impossible and much like everybody here, I think we thrive off of doing the impossible right um, so you know definitely hearing that uh and 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 I was one of those people that was in denial like look I done been to two Olympics there's always some drama around the Olympics <laughs> we, it, it we gonna get there and it's gonna be fine mm -hmm. um but then as a mother that also there you know I'm taking him to the pediatrician asking like so this thing that they're talking about over in China like you know, I, those are conversations that I had to have. But I mean, honestly, I'm taking the time to especially make sure that I don't mentally fry myself. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean, you know, it was a huge, huge disappointment to hear that the games were postponed, right? And so I actually allowed myself to take a couple of days to even process that news. Mm -hmm. And so like I called my coach and I was like, look, I'm not done, but I need some time to process this because I think a lot of times as athletes we especially get into this space that like we just got to push through and you know and just 
ignore the fact that look my feelings was hurt <laughs> like and I was just like I, I need this time you know and so you know I, I've had to get creative as far as workouts I'm the skinniest I've been since and I mean on the one hand I'm like you just had a baby so that's great but then on the other hand I'm like I ain't been this small since college like am I strong do I still have my power do I you know and we're doing the best that we can with what we have I haven't touched a track in two months I'm on the grass, I'm on the streets, I'm running over sticks in front of my house. Um, I applied to grad school because of course I'm thinking about, you know, what's life after I got into. That's right. Um, <laughs> but you know, I'm just shifting my energy, shifting my focus. Um, goal hasn't changed. The process is a little bit different, but, you know, also taking the time to find the positives and what feels like such a negative. Um, but, but, really the biggest thing for me is honestly protecting my mental space because that's the thing that I know that that if that's the first thing that goes everything else is out of the window mm -hmm. so um I'm really taking the extra um precaution to protect that and especially as a new mom <laughs> that is challenging but <laughs> I'm, I'm hanging in there <laughs> right yes with that pretty baby that pretty baby that boy is so cute oh so cute 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 oh my gosh um so real quick we're gonna hear from the twins and then because a couple of you have said it i want us to talk about the mindset i want us to shift and talk about the mindset <laughs> but i want to hear from the twins and what i wanted to ask you guys is you know, you guys are collegiate athletes. And so you didn't get to finish out your collegiate season for this season. And not only that, you guys are from Jamaica. You don't even know if you're going to get to go home to see your family. Yeah. So tell me real quick, like, how are you guys feeling about not finishing the collegiate season? And like, wait a minute, hold up. I can't go to see my family in Jamaica. What is going on? <laughs> um, okay, so first off, I must say, I think it started with perspective just understanding what happened and what I must do with that inside my head. Um, I, for both of us, we had already, we had just finished out um, indoor season when the pandemic hit and we had a wonderful life-changing moment. And so we had that enthusiasm and that joy finishing that season. And uh, um, we had coaches who tried to help us to accept, um, you know, the reality for what it is. And uh, so we were able to, you know, transition into just focusing on school and just, you know, really, just keeping our minds straight, not panicking, because we still had school. Um, and so we, we, we just, you know, quickly shifted and just transitioned into that. Um, because, you know, we just have to understand that it is what it is. It's just how you work around it. And we just find ways how we can, you know, make ourselves at use and just deal with the situation at hand. Um, going home for us, we really wanted to go home. We haven't been ho um, home in... Um, in almost two years this office will make two years and um you know it, 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 we're just wondering you know if we would get to go home we may not and for us we were already used to being away from our family I think it wasn't really uh took much of a toll on us even when we just came here I do miss them but it could have been worse if I was more stuck to home but I was always in boarding school so we're somewhat used to it but we still wanted to go home and now we don't we're not sure we're not sure if we're going to get to go home. And by the time August 14 comes around, we have to be back in school. So it may not work. It may. So if not, we just have to bear it out until maybe December. We could try to go home again. Right. And, you know, just, just get our head back into the game, um, the game for the upcoming season. Uh, we have an awesome team and we love what we do. And we are, we're just growing and, you know, just learning. And we appreciate the journey for everything that it comes with, both the good and the bad. Right. Um, the, well, now, okay. So wait a minute. Okay. Cause y'all, I still can't tell y'all apart. So that nobody was, can. nobody can. <laughs> that was Shanae. Was that Shanae? Yes. 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 I got it right. <laughs> okay. I got it right. See, we had some, we had twins on our team and I could tell them apart. Mickey and Lisa, I could tell them apart, but I can tell Mickey and Lisa apart. I can tell them apart. But listen, I, I y'all get me. So that was Shanae. So Shania, yes. real quick, give me real brief how you how you're feeling. Um, so first of all, I want to comment on the fact that uh um I'm grateful for the opportunity that I had a prosperous indoor season. 
because my freshman year of college, I I was basically out for the entire year because I had a uh, knee surgery. So I was very grateful for the fact that I could come back in my sophomore year and I had a, a tremendous, I really surprised myself for the indoor season. So um, when the COVID-19 pandemic came about, I wasn't in a state of ruin in the sense that I didn't feel like I hadn't accomplished anything for the year because I had a sense of accomplishment. So I'm grateful for that. But for you know my friends and teammates who are looking forward to uh, outdoor season. I know for a lot of people, you know, they had to like, you know, change their mindset, keep that motivation going, saying that even though I didn't get to complete my outdoor season, I still, I'm going to keep that fire burning. I'm still going to have my high hopes. I'm going to set my goals so that when I come back next time around, next semester, next year, you know, I'll be able to do way better than I ever did before. So I think, you know, it's all about our mindset and preparing ourselves, you know, emotionally, mentally, and socially. So when we position ourselves uh, for fall, you know, whatever we didn't achieve as an athlete, not just on the track, but off the track, you know, what are some of the things that I can do to be more prepared, um, you know, to achieve more as an athlete, to, you know, push myself to the limit. So for me, right now, I'm reflecting on my weaknesses, and how I can, you know, attack those weaknesses and turn them into strengths so that whenever I, you know, go back to school, you know, I can have a clear outlook, um, not on just the indoor season, but for the entire year, because track and field, it, it's, you know, it never stops, it goes all year, so you just have to be persistent, and I think, you know, consistency and persistency is what we really need, you know, as college students. Right. Wow. And here's the thing. All of you have are, have said some things about the mind and having to shift your mindset. And so I think that that's amazing because it sounds like everybody is on the same page. The athletes are on the same page. The coaches are on the same page and understanding like this is a mindset shift. You know, this is a shift. Um, uh, I always talk about having a champion's mindset. So a champion's mindset, because each person on here is a champion whether you're an athlete or whether you're a coach you've um you've accomplished some amazing things and so everybody on here is taught basically about having a champion's mindset about shifting your mindset you know and being able to go and still do whatever it is you need um whatever it is that you need to do um and so it's about 8 12 and i only wanted to be on here for an hour or less so i wanted to um ask um and anyone can answer the question um and here's what i wanted to ask how has this kind of affected your family um and i wanted to ask this question because i believe that during this time some of us have gained some things we have um access now to some things we didn't have access to um maybe we've lost some things that maybe we needed to lose. maybe we needed to lose like you know we talk all the time about now families now more than ever are outside they're walking they're biking they're running together they're doing so many things so people have gained new family traditions They've gained um, a new family perspective. Um, and guess what? Then guess what they have done? They have lost the old mindset of that. They come home, they go to work, they do this, they do that. And now they started to realize, you know what? I really need to make sure that I recalibrate and that I fit family time or whatever it is in mm -hmm. my normal everyday schedule. So I wanted to see if some of you can just tell me what have you gained what have you lost what have you now gained access to um how has it affected your family dwight can you tell me you know how that's kind of affected your family or what you gained or lost during this time that you were really looking forward to keeping in your life um really it's brought me and my family closer um i have two boys they're growing, they're very hungry all the time. And they're <laughs> eating up all of my food every day. So I'm just like so happy that I have to feed them so much that they consume. Um, but it's also good to just get a better feel for them. You know, I have teenage boys, so they're going through so much just on a regular. And I just want to be there to uplift them, to make sure that they make great decisions in life. And um you know, just spending that time. Um, I mean, we never really get the chance to spend this amount of time together. And to do that during these years, I mean, I think I'll always remember it. So I'm just going to hold on to it, enjoy it, and, you know, just take it for what it is. Um, but 
you know, nothing really much has changed outside of, you know, the social distancing. Um, my life still feels great, just like yeah. pre prior to the, um, so I'm a very optimistic person. So I try to take the, the, the good out of everything that happens and, and just ride with it. That's right. That's right. Um, what about um, you? Um, let's see, Aria, tell me what you may have gained or what you may have said, you know what, I don't need to do that anymore. You know what, because I haven't really been able to do it. I don't know. Tell me um, how, what you gained or what you've learned through this process. Look at your brother over here smiling like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> aspect of being with my family of course because I'm not with my family all the time when I'm at school so being able to like spend this much time with my family and my little siblings but um yeah and then also even when it goes back to like sports and stuff um mastering stuff that like I didn't focus on when I was in season and like preparing for what's to come so yeah, yeah. what did you learn Mackenzie um, well, I've definitely got a lot closer to um, my family. I think this experience has allowed me to get really close to my parents specifically. You know, in this recruiting process, it's been very important for us to talk to one another and express how I'm feeling, if I'm feeling stressed or if I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed or even when I call you sometimes and tell you how I'm feeling, it's been really good for um, our communication. And we've, we've learned how to do some stuff as a family. We go out and throw a frisbee sometimes, we bake, we cook, all that great stuff. So we're definitely all a lot closer than we were when this all started. Right. And I can definitely say that we're excited that you're coming to University of Mount Olive, which is right here in North Carolina. And so we'll get to see you a lot. <laughs> Lily is definitely excited because she's going to get to see you. She keeps asking, when is Mackenzie coming? When is Mackenzie coming? Um, um, Heenan, um, Heenan Tate, can you just, from a coach's perspective, kind of tell us what you've learned about your athletes during this time as well? Well, uh, I've learned, I, as a matter of fact, uh, I have two of them that are here. Uh, I've learned that, uh, that Tavis is still crazy and Zach <laughs> has no sense at all. So, <laughs> I, but, but no, it's, um, you know, we're going through that process of dealing with my seniors particularly, uh, just trying to talk them through and understanding that, that life is, is, is so fragile that just in a moment's time that uh, something can be taken from someone's uh, grasp, you know, something as simple as a season that they were looking forward to, that they started in August of last year preparing for. And, 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 it, and it's taught me that sensitivity just to look at them, you, you know, let's get in what we can. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm more tempted now to get my athletes fast uh, before anything can happen. So, you know, it, it, it just, it makes you more, uh, sensitive to time mm -hmm. and the time that you're using not to take uh, any of it for granted but to take every moment every day that you have you know you guys know I'm a preacher so uh, everything's a sermon to me so you know <laughs> I often tell the congregation you only have now the only thing you right. ever have in life is now you don't have your past you don't have your future but it's what you do right now that really matters because that sets you up that if something does happen if you're prepared because you used your now right, then whatever comes up, you know how to make the adjustments properly. And I think that's the most important thing out of this. Right. right. And one quick question for you, and then I want to move because I want everyone to get a chance to say something. I have a question for everybody. Um, would you say that you think that this is the new norm and that this is kind of where we're going, um, that this new thing that's happened, it's kind of shifted and it's probably going to pretty much stay there? You know, when, when things happen to us, it changes our lives, but the, the general population continues. This right here happened to everyone. So right. for that reason, it changes everything. I mean, there will be some things that will go back to normal, but for the most part, people will think differently. Uh, they will pay more attention to when they go outside, when they sit in the movie theater. You know, they will pay more attention. I think we'll pay more attention to our children, understanding that. We often say that we don't have time to do things. Well, this pandemic made time for us. Mm -hmm. And so it showed us that we can make the time if we need to. So um, mm -hmm. I'm just like Dwight. I'm always looking for what is the, the, the good thing out of this? What does this make me uh, pay attention to that I didn't before? 
So I think that's important. Yes. yes, that's good. So real quick, um, if any of you out there are watching, any viewers, if you have any questions, I just want you to type them in the um in the Facebook Live. And at the end, we'll I'll maybe pick a couple of questions and we'll answer them real quick, um, directed toward anybody. But real quick, I want each person on here, give me maybe 10 seconds, 30 seconds. And I want each person on here because I believe that each person that's on here is meant to be on here and you are valuable. I don't care what it is you do, a coach, an athlete, high school, college, whatever it is, each person on here is valuable. And I, when I was doing this, I was like, who can I, who can I find? Um, and so I just want to let each one of you know that I personally, you guys know, if you don't, I'm a pastor too, but I personally prayed about this. And I was like, I want to do this because this is my heart. And I want people to hear the shift that's going on because there are athletes on here like Natasha, um, Deanna, this is the season that they will be going. This is how they make their livelihood. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They, they may be sponsored, you know, but guess what? They go to track meets, they get a parent's fees, they get prize money. So everything has shifted for them. You understand what I'm saying? So it was dear to my heart. And I just want to tell each and every one of you, thank you so much for coming on and sharing a piece of my heart. But I want each person to give me about a 30 second clip of some encouraging words for coaches, athletes, parents, and even those that are watching. You may not be an athlete, you may not be a coach, but you may have some business goals. You may have some personal goals that you have family goals, relationship goals, whatever it is, but give the people that are watching and us that are sitting here on this panel, some encouraging words to just tell us and to, so that we can keep a champion's mindset, not just during this time, but after this is over, we need to keep this type of mindset. So starting with Coach Matt, just give us something. Night would, uh, you know, talking about finding the good things out of this. And I, I think when, when things, you know, it's, a, it's obviously a bad situation we're in, but there's so many good things because we've had a time to, to stop and slow down and really evaluate what's really important in life. And, uh, you know, we're a firm believer. We talk about, we coach life, you know, like many of the people on here, we don't coach football. Uh, Dorian can attest to, you know, what we do. We invest in young people, uh, those relationships. And these relationships, it, it's it's affirmed to me what the coaching staff, the football coach staff, and everybody I work with at Terry Stafford has done for these kids. We have built that relationship with the, with the young person. And it's carried over during this time of stress and, you know, doubt and things of that nature. And I feel, you know, I just feel like that us slowing down has reaffirmed those things. It has, has really made me feel good about the people that I work with, you know, the school, the coaches that I work with, uh, you know, in particular. And, uh, and proud of those relationships that we've built. And uh, I think we'll learn from this and even get, you know, these relationships will grow stronger. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for that, Coach Mack. Yep. Thank you so much. Um, twins, real quick, Shanae and Shania, real <laughs> quick, <laughs> give the people that are watching, give us um, real quick some encouraging words to take us um, even after this pandemic. Okay, so I can start by saying fulfill purpose in whatever you do, whatever you can, wherever, whoever you are, wherever you are, you have some form of purpose or something that you can give to the world. It doesn't matter in what way, big or small. I think what I've learned is just using all your gifts and talents to, you know, leave something with somebody and in what, whichever area, area you find yourself. Because somebody said the greatest death is not dying physically, but, you know, really dying with all the things that you were meant to give to the world right. still on the inside of you and just, you know, going to waste. And so awesome. that would be my motivation. Awesome. Just fulfill purpose in the smallest way you can in everything you do every day. Good. Um, yeah, and I would say um, I recently came across this uh, Facebook post that asked a rhetorical question, which is more painful, sitting down and being stagnant in the state that you are or sacrificing your comfort zone to move on to something greater that would give you lasting mm -hmm. joy. So I would say to you, to anyone out there watching, if you have something deep inside your heart you want to achieve, whether it be um, as an athlete, a parent, an individual start mm -hmm. sowing the seeds right now push through the discomfort make the sacrifices because you're only going to it's only going to do the best for you and you're going to thank yourself for it. when you look back at what you did or the sacrifices you made right now it, it, it can only do better for you so just you know push past your comfort zone seek help if you need help 
seek mentorship, pray, and do all the stuff that you need to do because it's only going to make you better. Wow, that's good. Push past your comfort zone. I like that. Mm, that's good. Um, let's see. Um, Natasha. All right. Um, 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> you know, well, hey, you know, if it takes more than 30 seconds, that's all right. But, you know, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I, I was so many things I want to say because I heard yeah. the young okay. one say some things that um go ahead I was I I, 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 heard, I hurt for you and by that I mean you know number one I don't believe that God makes mistakes and mm -hmm. this was a huge huge disappointment and in a lot of ways um I mentioned I'm from New York City I lived through 9-11 mm -hmm. different situation mm -hmm. but a lot like a, a life changing experience. And I heard right. Dorian say earlier that his last day of school, he could he didn't even imagine that that was gonna be his last day of school. And the idea that you're that young and already having to understand that you don't know what tomorrow will bring yeah. um, is heartbreaking, but it's also an opportunity for us all to learn and grow, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, much like I, I think back to 9-11 and it it made us sit still, right? It made us, the planes were grounded. Nobody could go anywhere. We had to sit down and figure out how was life now going to go on? Because it, it can't go on how it was. And we're going to have to make some changes. So, you know, God forced us to sit still and figure some things out. And so I think similar to that, <laughs> We're now having to sit still. We're very active in our stillness, but we got to figure some things out from here. And then lastly, this has been, you know, 2020 is it 2020 is ghetto to me. <laughs> it's just been a hard year, but I just keep telling myself winter always turns to spring okay. and you just have to know that, you know, I, again, God makes no mistakes. He, Mm -hmm. created the the winter spring fall summer he created it that way for a reason and this too shall pass and as long as we're active in this moment of stillness we'll come out of this even greater so to my high school seniors my my college students i this is your time to you know get creative get active in the stillness and find find your purpose and you know, just make whatever you can out of this. This this was meant to make us greater. Yes, I love what you just said. Active in your stillness, I like that. Okay, I'm telling you, y'all dropping some good nuggets. Okay, <laughs> y'all dropping some good nuggets. We got some good hashtags. Listen, some good. What is it? The goal don't change. The the, the goal don't change. The process different. <laughs> I mean, y'all, th this is amazing. This is so amazing. Um, Dwight, great. Go on and tell us, you know, give us some encouraging words. Well, you know, I think that you can use this opportunity, everyone, um, to win. And I'm always wearing the hat and people always ask me, why are you wearing this hat? Because I feel that we all can be winners in life. Um, no matter if you're an athlete or a student or coach, it, it really doesn't matter. And it comes with a great sacrifice because you have to work. You have to continue to work hard. You identify your goals and you never give up. I mean, and you just have to have that attitude in order to be a champion in life um, because I, we're all put here for a specific reason. We all have a raison d'etre, which in French is meaning a purpose in life. And I think like now with being still, you can understand what your purpose really is. And you can, if you have a goal or aspiration, you can work towards that goal or aspiration. So I have two boys and, you know, they love playing 2K. They love playing video games. And I'm like, it's like, I want to be an all-star on the 2K. I was like, no, nah, we need to be an all-star in life. We need to be yes. all-stars in life. So we can use this time to get better at whatever it is they want to do. They want to be better students, better at math. You can do more math now, mm -hmm. you know, with no reservations. If you want to be a better football player, you can put in a little extra work on your own. You can get stronger. 
you can understand the nuances of the game better. So I say take this opportunity to just win. And because we all know that winning is non-negotiable. That's that sounded like a commercial, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you better do it. You can do it. Winning is non-negotiable. <laughs> Winning yeah. is non-negotiable. Now, yeah, Dwight. I mean. Yeah. Dwight, your um your club or your um training is it's the winner circle, is it? Yes, yes, it's the winner okay. circle. The winner's yeah. circle. And I'm not, I don't know why you chose winner's circle. Was it because you're a winner and it's never ending? The circle is never ending. Like what what is the winner, the winner's circle? I mean, it's just about providing a service to athletes. When I was an athlete, I had to go somewhere to get a massage therapist. I had to go to a strength and conditioning coach. I had to go to all these different people um, just so that I could be my best all, to go out to these great people in my circle so that I could provide the services for my athletes so they could be their very best, not some of the time, but just all the time. Good. Good. Thank you so much, Dwight. Um, Deanna, if you could give us real quick, give us some encouraging words as we get ready to end. Oh, man. If I had to give encouraging words, it was, um, you're not in this alone. You know, every time you step in the ring, every time you step on the line, every, every time, you know, you're going onto that field, you know, it's not just you yourself, it's we, we're all doing this together. Anybody who's ever supported you, anybody who's ever just gave you a call to see how you're doing, you know, your mom, your dad, your friends, you know, um, it's not me, it's we, we did this together and you should never feel alone. And I'm hoping that, you know, you, every time you're working out or you're doing something, um, you're doing it for a purpose and you know, you're gonna impact someone else's life for the better. So I'm hoping that, you know, sorry, um, if you know me, I do, I, I tear up a lot and I, I appreciate everyone talking because it just makes me really happy. So um, I'm hoping, you know, just remember that, you know, if you need a hand or a help, just reach out because I'll be more than happy to give you a hug. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, she will definitely give you a hug. Okay, so real quick story. Me and Deanna met. Where were we will. at, Deanna? <laughs> Deanna, we met at a competition. Where? What competition was it? Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> it was the world championships. Um, but we met and I had on these blue jeans that had stars on them, okay? So I was waiting to check her out when she was getting ready to go compete. And she was like, I love your pants. And so after she went out there and competed and she won, <laughs> she came back and gave me this huge hug. I mean, she almost took me down to the ground. <laughs> she was like, it was the pants, it was the pants. <laughs> Yeah, I made sure you wore them too on finals day. <laughs> yeah, she was like, you got to wear, you got to wear, because I think she was like, you got to wear those. So I wore them again just for her. Um, but I was glad to be able to, um, to be able to contribute um, to your ever so great performance. Um, but thank you so much, Deanna, um, for those, for those words. Dorian, um, give us um, some encouraging words. Give those young athletes out there, or not just young athletes, or give anybody out there some encouraging words before we sign off. Um, I would say um, going to college now, I would say for seniors in high school or seniors in general or kids in high school, just just don't take life for granted. And um, this has just showed me to not take life for granted and um, to just work hard. I've worked hard um, four years. Like Coach Mack said, I've been at Terry Sanford for four years and I've just had an amazing time. And with this COVID, it's just made me think of all the memories and all the, all the, all the accomplishments I've had at Terry Sanford. And it's just humbled me because this, 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 this situation has just made me look of look at the the better of it and it's just made me work harder and I thought about it the other day and it's just made me I work out more than I have ever in my life and it's it's something that's just it's more of a gratitude thing than anything because it's just made me feel 
I've looked at the bad side and I'm not having a high school prom, not taking all that, but I'm like, I get to work hard every single day. I get to grind every single day and no one can tell me not to. I have nothing else really to do. And it's just, it's like y'all say, like I, to be great is so amazing to have so many studs in here. I'm just amazed because it's just like, this is what I want to be like. This is exactly what I want to be when I get older. And it's just, it's just amazing. So thank you for letting me be in this session. Almost definitely. And you will, you're already amazing and you will be amazing. You're an amazing young man. See Thank you in the hallways all the time. Um, you are definitely an amazing young man. Um, now let's go to Aria McKenzie and um, Coach Tate and just give us real quick some encouraging words before we sign off. Aria. I think that this time just um, gives you everyone like a clean slate to really like sit back and focus on what's to come in the future. And also even thinking like track is gonna end at some point for every person. So like what you could do afterwards um, in your career and stuff like that. So that's also a big aspect because we can't do anything now. So like you can look at stuff like that because of course track is gonna end one day for you, so. Right, Mackenzie? Um, I would definitely say that this experience or all experiences are what you make them. So a lot of a lot of this experience has been difficult and it has been tough, but we've gotten the positive things out of them because we want the positive things out of them. So you really have to push yourself and even that pushing that extra mile just to get what you want out of it. Because like Auden said, the goal doesn't change, the process does. So you have to really adjust yourself and adapt to what you are going through and making this what it should be and what you want it to be for you. Good, that's awesome, adapt. Coach Tate? Well, for me, uh, I would ask people at this point, do you want to be a survivor or you want to be more than a conqueror? Um, mm -hmm. and, and it's just like what Ari said, it, it gives you a clean slate. And I think that's important. Uh, this this um, pandemic has given fathers and mothers clean slate, has given children clean slates. You know, it, it, one of the most amazing things, uh, I, you know, Aria is 21, 20, 21, Auden is 23, Serene is 26. And I, I, you know, one day I was sitting, I was wondering, I can't even remember when we taught them how to ride bicycles. But now I got a, uh, we've adopted a four-year-old and a seven-year-old and I got to teach them how to take their training wheels off on yesterday and they're riding their bikes. Now, of course, my four-year-old, he decides that he's going to go, uh, instead of turning, he went into the bushes, but I mean, it was still, we laughed about it. He got a couple of scratches. Right. Just to see that moment. Enjoy the moment. That's what I want to say. Enjoy the moment. No matter what it is, you, you have an opportunity to enjoy the moment. Do that. That's good. Yes, enjoy the moment. Um, Auden? Yeah, there you go. Um, I just say uh, anything, just to be encouraged, just, you know, for me, uh, I'm just, you know, trying trying to find different ways, you know, to get better, you know, just I obviously don't have a, a in-person OTA, but, like, I have one online that I do every day from 11 to 1, but now I guess this just gives me more time to, you know, I came off injury last year, so this gives me more time personally to heal up. My body gets time to heal up. They get times to, you know, just get better. And also just working on my weaknesses way more now, stuff that I wasn't doing or would never think to do because it would take too much time to try to figure out. Now I got a lot of time to figure it out and try it and see if it works in my game or not. And then I got a lot of time to just try different stuff, like I say. So just having all this time is just, it's, it's a blessing, but only if you use it right. That's good. Only if you only if you use it right. That is really good. We got to use it right. Um, Natalie, tell us, give us some encouraging words, pretty girl. Um, so like a lot of you know that um, from my Terry Sanford people that I'm the kind of person that I will make myself vulnerable, like emotionally to um, help other people. So for me, um, this is my first year at Terry Sanford, and it was amazing. And you just feel when you're surrounded by so many people that have similar goals to you, um, it makes times like this so much easier. Um, and I feel like with 
my Terry Sanford friends as long as, and um, like people outside of school. Um, it's so nice to be able to have a circle that you feel safe and you feel protected. And um, I was a sophomore at a travel club meeting and I remember the head of the company or like the, um, the club um, said that people sometimes forget about the amazing things that an athlete does like through the sport of volleyball, but people are always gonna remember the impact that you left on them. And that is something that I have lived by all through my um, volleyball journey and through my recruiting process. So at a time like this, that's just a reminder to me that, you know, I'm a senior. So I have younger girls that are, you know, just starting high school that are rising seniors that are looking up to me. So even though this is really disappointing and really hard at times, especially when you feel like you've lost so much, um, that you have people around you that you've made an impact on and that they're watching you and they're looking at you to see how you handle it. Um, so for me, this has just been something that I've focused on to try to encourage other people to be like, look, I want you to be the best that you can be. Don't wait, don't settle. And just for anything that you want to do, just go and do it and do it well. Yes. Wow. Thank you all so much, everyone on here, everybody watching. I really appreciate this. You really, 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 you make my heart feel so happy um, because I really wanted to do this um, because people need to hear how athletes feel, you know? I mean, and guess what? There are so many different, we got essential workers out there. We got all different people, but this is my, this is, this is my heart right here. The athletes and the coaches, um, and the climate and everything that's going on. And I think we're all called to different places. And so this, I know this is where I'm called to is to athletes, coaches, and to just a champion's mindset. And so I just want to tell everybody out there watching, you've heard, you've heard a high school coach, football coach, you've heard um, collegiate athletes from a different country, Jamaica, you've heard a mother who has um, a newborn child, um, you've heard from her, you've heard from a coach that used to be a professional athlete that has won numerous gold medals. You've heard from um, someone who's newly married, Deanna, with um, a husband who is her coach and was, was training for the Olympics. You've heard from a high school football um, star and he also plays baseball you've heard from two amazing athletes you've heard from a high school track athlete who's getting ready to go to college and from one that is actually in college going into her aria is this your senior year um junior year on the junior year yes you've heard from a coach who is not only a coach but he's an actor y'all he was on army wives He's an actor, he's a pastor, does so many different things and a coach. You've heard from an NFL wide receiver, the best wide receiver there is out there. If y'all don't know about Auden Tate, he is, not just cause he's my nephew, but he got them hands and he, he get high up in the sky, okay? Go back and watch some <laughs> film, look him up. Um, but you've heard from him, you've heard from an amazing volleyball player. Um, you've heard from a different wide range of athletes and coaches um, that have given you words of encouragement. You, you've heard them tell you how to shift your mindset. You've heard them tell you how the goal is still the same. The process is just different. You've heard them say that you need a circle of people around you to keep you. This is not just for athletes, but this is for anything that you do in life, okay? This is for your business. This is for your family, for your marriage, whatever it is that you have going on. And so for everybody out there watching, I just wanna tell you, thank you for tuning in to Candid Conversations with Coach D um, and everybody that is on here. Thank y'all so much for agreeing to do this with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I was nervous, y'all. I felt like I was getting ready to compete. I felt like I was getting ready to run, okay? Um, somebody put up a, a flashback today of, I think it was 2001 NCAA championships, the 400 meters, where it was me, Mickey, Lisa, Allison Beckford. That was a hard championship for us. And I felt like I looked on there, okay? I was standing there like, okay? <laughs> I felt like that before this, <laughs> um, but this was so great. Um, 
And so thank you again to everybody who's out there watching. Listen, everybody that you see on there, go to the flyer, find these people, find their Facebook pages, find their Instagram gram pages, follow them. I'm sure they don't mind you reaching out to them if you got questions. You got Dwight who's in the ATL area. I just talked with somebody yesterday who's looking for a mentor. So I'm gonna connect you, Dwight. Um, somebody that runs track. Um, you got Auden Tate on here. You got these girls who are in college, Aria Tate, Aaron, you got Natasha, Deanna, you got Natalie, Dorian, you got Coach Mack, you have Heenan Tate, you have Coach Tate. They are willing to give you advice. They are willing to give you support. So I'm telling you, go follow them, reach out to them. Please, please, please reach out to them and just say hello, ask them any questions. Um, we're getting ready to sign off Facebook Live and each person that's on the Zoom, I just need you to stay on one quick second after we go off Facebook Live. Um, but everybody out there watching, stay tuned in to Parallel Fitness um, on IG and on Facebook. On IG, it's um, A underscore Champions Mindset, Demetria Davis, Parallel Fitness. We have some different things coming up. I'm cooking on there. I'm doing all kinds of talks and everything. So please make sure you stay tuned. Follow me. And we love you all so much for joining us. Can everybody say bye? Bye. 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 bye.